Hi guys, Mrs. Crankerface has returned. Let's see what kind of video the Mister has prepared for us today. Back to work on the CNC converted KNT mill from 1947. He haven't paid much attention when documenting this, so some things might be out of order. Most urgent issue to sort out is the amount of ships landing on the three stepper motors, with a chance of getting stuck between the pulleys and belt. When milling metal, this can seriously damage the belt. He managed to find a suitable scrap piece, so he just bolted this to the X and Z mounts. Somewhere in this process, his ridiculous creativity obviously took charge, and along came a foldable table. Having it foldable felt like a great idea at the time, but later on he realized it was incredibly unimportant, as it would always be up. The table is made from some old road sign that was um, heading for the dump. Always great when you can reuse things. It's not always convenient running for the keyboard, so he started to make some kind of control panel. He's making sure to stay beneath the top of the table so he can still mill oversized pieces. Obviously, he wanted to make it real sturdy, so he made this out of 4mm plate that was lying around. This proved to be quite the challenge to bend with his homemade bender, but he managed to get it there in the end. In a rare case of luck, the cutout was the perfect size of making the two sides. Since he wasn't satisfied with the wells, he decided to grind it down into a nice bevel instead. Planning the layout of switches and buttons was pretty straightforward, but he would have prioritized differently if he were to do this again. The machine got to drill all the holes to get them in the right positions with minimal hassle. The overhaul is the one where the drill snapped in the last video. This was entirely his fault, not the machine, obviously. The hardware part is now pretty much done and, well, it definitely covers the stepper motors. He then added labels for everything, as it's easy to forget what's what. Everything was taken apart for a quick coat of paint, and it's starting to look pretty promising. The control panel got its paint removed and sanded for a nice finish. He also integrated a USB socket for transferring G-codes. With the cover from the Y and Z motors turning into an entire control panel, his next idea was to also integrate and automate some kind of ship protection. Still just shooting from the hip and fabricating on the go, he took some quick measurements and chopped up some sheet metal. Here he is using aluminum square tubing to reinforce it, as the sheet is quite wobbly in itself. He thought it'd be interesting to go with a riveted design, a choice he has regretted many times by now. The hinges are something else he found heading for the scrap, originally part of some kind of schematic holders. He just had to size them and rivet them on. With two pair of doors made, he started testing how they'd fit on the mill. His idea was for these to fold in and out whilst also lowering and raising big sheets of plastic. This would obviously help to catch all the ships whilst letting you monitor what's going on. Folded in, they would stay below the table surface, out of the way for fixturing or machining pieces larger than the mill table. Folded out, they would protect him from any debris from the milling process, be it chips or broken tools. He tried to keep the amount of electrical components down, but instead ended up with something mechanically overcomplicated, per usual. With this setup, there's one motor per side for folding the door pair in and out, and two motors for winching up the windows. The winch motors are about the size of a thumbnail, so he was actually quite surprised that they managed to lift the windows up. Here's the first prototype of the doors done. Lots of small pieces that have to work together and maintain tight fits, which was actually impossible with his riveted design. Overall, uh, he judged this prototype as a failure, half due to the doors not being able to fold reliably with the gears falling out of mesh, and half due to the windows not being reliable enough. Sometimes they would overshoot and start going back down again and vice versa. He made a temporary solution so he could still do some milling and not have to wear a full face shield. The red tinted sheet both holds the doors open and protects from ships in this case. Taking a little break from the shields, he started working on relocating the PC to stop most of the ships from landing on it. He shoved up some more square tubing and did some practice with the TIG welder. And suddenly we have a wall mount! Needing some way to run cables between the control panel and the PC, he decided to use a thick plastic flex hose here. Since there was already a hole here that needed to be enlarged, he made a template to center the hole saw, which worked really good. 
Next was this 3D printed elbow. The bend is really too sharp when running wires, but hindsight is always 2020. After getting some tips from forums, I decided to connect all DC miners to a collective point, which is the copper bus bar set on the plastic bushing. This should make sure you don't get varying ground voltages. A stack of relays also got added so he could control some high voltage features from the control panel without actually having to run 230 volt to it. His setup so far was pretty awful when it comes to controlling it. The monitor showing all the info was high up on the wall, almost behind where he stood at the machine. As such, the next task was to move it to a slightly less awful position. Since he still wanted to keep the position display he already had mounted, he had to make a special bracket here. He started with a tube, notched a hole for the big screen's bolt and welded in a reinforcement tube. For the much lighter top screen he just added some plate to the top of the main tube with a hole for its bolt. To attach this whole thing he made a captive nut of sorts and attached this to the bottom of the main tube. This let him attach it back to the monitor arm from the mill. Not the most solid thing, but it does the job. Here shown with the shields off. Standing behind the shields it's a bit far away for coding, but otherwise it works well. Somewhere around this time he also installed a VFD. This lets him control the mill speed from the software, which is quite cool. And after all of this he could somewhat comfortably go back to making chips. For Mrs. Crankerface to find around the house, obviously. He added a small numpad keyboard to allow for easy jogging and a nozzle for shooting air at the end mill to clear ships. He's already designed a new solution for the doors, which is what he's trying to machine here out of some kind of plastic, I guess. It's a great material to learn with, since when you mess up it doesn't cause the destruction that steel or aluminium can. All moves here are done with programming, some manual coding and some generated from Fusion 360. He tries to write a lot by hand to learn all the function, of course. The mill now has a fast travel of around 2500 mm per second, but he's gonna see if he can push that up a bit further. He's doing the milling at 600 to 1000 mm per second and 1700 RPM or so. He'd want even more RPM, but this spindle only does 1400 normally, so he doesn't want to push his luck too far. If you notice a lot of pauses in the movements when changing direction, that's actually the software's backlash compensation doing its thing. Every time an axis changes direction, it slows down the movement and moves a bit extra to compensate for the slack in the old and worn lead screws. He also played around a bit with aluminum. Aluminum? Aluminium? But more on this in the next part. Thank you guys for watching, leave a comment and subscribe if you feel like it, and give some shoutouts to Mrs. Crankyface for suffering through this script, right? Woo! He made a temporary solution... Solution? Solution? Taking a little break from the shields, he started working on relocation... Relocation... Relo... God damn it, honey. This script is... Horrible. I have no clue what that means. The flip up cover switch swoop swoo. The person who has written the script for me is a sadist. Compensate for the slack in the old and worn. God damn it, I was so close.